Hey, buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Gilbin is the name, and Hearthstone is the game, and it's part 11 of my Rosticons Rumble card review. Seven new cards, two new legendaries, some exciting stuff all around. If you don't have time, hit the quick reviews link in the description. Otherwise, let's jump into the detailed reviews. Up first here, let's talk about Zul Jin, the new hero card for Hunter. Coming in at 10 mana, the battle cry reads, cast all spells you've played this game, targets chosen randomly, the hero power, two mana, berserker throw, deals two damage. Specifically, that means to either a minion or a hero. So a little bit of an unleashed hunter hero power there that it can hit minions, which is maybe giving a little extra utility. But the exciting part about Zul'jin, of course, here is the battle cry, casting all spells you've played this game. That is absolutely bonkers. So if you've played nine spells up to Zul'jin, he's going to play nine spells for you when you play him. So think about things like secrets, for instance. Zul'jin could just play five secrets instantly as soon as you play him. You have spell stones that could summon you four three three wolves, and spell stones do upgrade in hand, so he would recast the upgraded version of the spell stone. You have things like animal companions and to my sides and deadly shots and crushing walls and all kinds of just universally good hunter spells there are so many hunter spells that just always do a good thing now admittedly there are some that could backfire potentially like kill commands for instance could accidentally hit you in the face or kill your own minions those obviously exist slanking strikes might do the same thing like you get a 3-3 but you might kill 3-3 in the process so not all spells would work perfectly with zuljin but certainly there are a handful that work really really well especially within that spell hunter archetype if you go for secrets and spell stones and animal companions and to my sides you're probably going to have this really impressive package whenever you play Zul'jin where he just dumps a ton of stuff onto the board, gives you a lot of secrets, and potentially clears a fair bit of your opponent's board, creating this enormous swing turn potential. And that's great, right? Because we've seen cards that summon a lot of minions before like Gul'dan, but Gul'dan doesn't usually kill your opponent's stuff. Zul'jin could maybe do both, summon a bunch of beasts, kill your opponent's stuff, and play secrets. So I really do think the sky is higher for this card than something like even Gul'dan, uh, because he can just do so much at once. Now, some people might say, well, Gul'dan gives you a lot of survivability because of the taunts that he summons of Void Lords, or potentially damage from Doom Guards in the past with things like Cube Lock. That's true, but I actually think Zul'jin could do exactly the same. You can get some Mishas, you can get some Huffers. Maybe not as consistent or predictable in those scenarios, but still gives you a lot of bodies and potentially defensive bodies on top of that. Also, Secrets offer you survivability. So I do think Zul'jin will feel safe to play if you build your deck correctly, because you'll get Explosive Trap that kills small boards. You'll get Wandering Monsters and Freezing Traps to interrupt your opponent's attacks to face. So it will feel like a card that's probably safe to play and will just summon a bunch of stuff onto the field, which makes it impactful and immediate. And that's great. And sometimes you're going to want that. Now, the hero power here, Berserker Throw, a little bit less exciting because uh, most of the time it doesn't add up to that much, right? A two damage ping is certainly good. That's better than a normal hero power because you can clear off minions nicely. Uh, it's like that upgraded mage odd hero power, right? But it's certainly not... Uh, on the level with like Gul'dan, for instance. So Berserker Throw is the real weak spot for Zul'jin, but I think the idea is, look, you're probably going to be, you know, putting yourself in a great spot to win the game whenever you get off this battle cry. The hero power is perhaps not as important towards that long-term game plan. Hunter already has a Death Knight hero card in Rexar, this being a normal hero card, Rexar being a Death Knight hero card. I know the difference, guys. Uh, Rexar gives you that long-term game plan, right? At least right now in standard format, they achieve different things. So some decks might want to run Rexar. Decks that are looking to be slightly more aggressive could maybe make room for Zul'jin, particularly if they're a spell hunter list. At 10 mana, he is admittedly slow for aggro decks or face hunter decks, so he's probably not going to make the cut there. They're also often more minion-based, so Zul'jin won't fit in every sort of version of hunter, but spell hunter, I think, can just run both. Toss in Zul'jin, toss in Rexar, play one if you get it. If you don't see it, you might play the other one, you know. You may want to play one for a certain matchup. You could play Zul'jin first and then follow up with Rexar later for his long-term value while you still get the tempo advantage of Zul'jin. Play Zul'jin to secure lethal or flip the game when your opponent's out of stuff. There are so many ways to play this guy. He's going to find a deck. Now, 
I will admit he may not see as much play while Rexar is still in standard format, but as soon as Rexar rotates out, Zuljin's going to be the best option and some decks are going to make him work. He's just going to do things you like because Hunter has so many ways for that to work. Now, also admittedly, things like Spellstone go away with standard format rotation. Um, so, and, and, you know, spell hunter as an archetype kind of goes away a little bit, but hunter just has good spells. Secrets alone might be enough. Animal companion and secrets are probably a great package for Zul'jin. So there's going to be a deck that makes this thing work. This card will absolutely be successful. And I think it looks like a pretty fun, cool design on top of that. So I am excited to give this one a try. Moving on, let's talk about Moho Master, Mojo Master, Mo Mojo, Moho, Mojo Master Zihi, six mana, five, five, battle cry, set each player to five mana crystals. My God, it's a druid nightmare, <laughs> taking their 10 mana and reverting it back to five. How dare you? And uh, I do think that's probably why Mojo Master Zihi here was created as a specific answer to things like ramp, but also combo decks because combo decks need to have a lot of mana in order to achieve their combos. They often need their full mana to play those nine mana shutter walks to do things with Malagos. They need lots of mana to make that work. And Mojo Master Zihi basically is a reset on those mana totals so that those decks trying to utilize those full pools of mana can't quite do that as successfully. So Druids no longer have that mana advantage from ramp. You can't drop Malagos at five mana. You can't play Shutterwalk at five mana. So I think this card exists as a really cool tech answer to a certain style of play and in, a, and in a direction that I didn't really expect either. Now that said, what kind of deck runs Mojo Master Zihi? Is it an aggro deck that's looking to keep the game at low cost so that they can thrive? Um, maybe, I'm not really sure. Seems like it could be risky to run a six mana five five that doesn't always help your game plan in an aggro deck. Maybe it goes in control decks to prevent combo decks from running amok so that they have more time to um, you know build a board or do whatever thing a control deck's trying to do. But there's still some inevitability in combo decks, even with Mojo Master Zihi. Eventually they're gonna get back to 10 mana. So I'm not sure that works necessarily either. I'm having a little bit of a trouble finding a home for this guy, but the way he works is he probably finds a deck, he probably succeeds, and that keeps that certain sort of archetype or degenerate combo deck, whatever it is, in check. Uh, at least a little bit, as tech cards tend to do. So he's like that skulking geist that maybe just one or two decks runs, but it still has an impact and an influence on the meta. So a good card to exist. Now we should talk about how this works. It has been confirmed how it works. So if you play this guy on six mana, you're not getting five full mana crystals. You're getting five empty mana crystals. So you're not going to like be able to play this for one mana, essentially, where you play him for six, he gives you five, and you can play another five drop. No, you go down to zero out of five. Zero active out of five total. That means your opponent also goes to five mana crystals, and then they go to six as soon as you pass the turn back to them. So it's not really like they're going to five. It's kind of like they're going to six just because of the way mana automatically accumulates at the start of your turn. Uh, beyond that, uh, if you play this at 10 mana, you do retain your active mana crystals, right? So you would go down to four active crystals out of five total possible empty crystals. So you would still be able to play a four mana card alongside Mojo Master Zihi. Uh, I don't really think that changes the implications of the card much. Um, uh, just good to clarify for anybody who doesn't quite understand. So ultimately, what does that mean? I think this card's playable. I don't think it's hugely influential. It will only work in certain metas and certain decks, but still a, a, a card I'm glad exists, a cool design, a, a fun tech card to certain, certain kinds of decks. So all around pretty cool stuff. So up next, let's talk about the Beast Within, a new Hunter spell, one mana, give a friendly beast plus one plus one, then it attacks a random enemy minion. So we have here a, a very small buff at a very small cost, but it does do something cool in that it, you know, it, it basically instantly activates an attack, which can be beneficial, right? So a couple ways to use it perhaps in the early game, say you got like a 3-3 on board because you're a hunter, you can turn this into a 4-4 and make it immediately attack your opponent's 3-3 so that it survives and then it value trades and you're happy. So maybe you play it right alongside flanking strike and you, you know, flanking strike one, three, three, and then you use this on your uh, three, three wolf and you kill the other three, three on board. So it puts minions essentially with rush, basically how they can attack another minion 
uh, freely. But the way this works, it has already been confirmed that uh, it does not use up your attack. So if you use this on a minion that has already been on board and has attacking initiative, you can attack like face with that minion and then use beast within and it will attack again or vice versa. It's its own unique thing. It does not use up the attack of that minion on that turn. So that adds some neat flexibility. Now, the other way to use this card is with like maybe say something like Undasta, a card where if you're able to take advantage of its overkill effect in particular, uh, then you could do some really cool things. So like you play Undasta, you run it into an enemy minion, you activate the overkill, then you play the beast within on Undasta and you get to attack with Undasta again, perhaps activating the overkill and getting another beast out of your hand. So there are ways to use this with rush minions in particular. I think it's pretty cool how they can attack twice in a single turn or overkill minions, just giving them extra attack, giving them another opportunity to activate any overkill they might have. Now, all that said, although there are some ways to use this, I, I really just don't think this card does quite enough it's uh, it's only plus one plus one, which isn't a big gain. That extra attack usually isn't going to be that impactful. Saving it for a specific sort of Undasta combo puts your decks at odds with itself, right? You got one mana stuff, nine mana stuff. That's a pretty big gap. Are you a control deck? Are you an aggro deck? Can you run one mana spells on a control deck? Don't really think so. To me, that really just means this card's probably going to not see a lot of play. I don't think it's by any means terrible. There are plays where you'd like to do it but uh, it's just not going to make the cut in decks. So doesn't have enough oomph or enough power level or enough value for the decks that would like it the most, so it will fall short. So now let's talk about Mage's Splitting Image. New secret, and I love the name, love the artwork, really funny name. Three mana, of course, is a secret, and it reads, when one of your minions is attacked, summon a copy of it. And I like the secret a lot because it's really hard to play around if the mage plays it well. So for instance, if you only have big scary minions in your deck, suddenly splitting image is guaranteed to work on a big scary minion. So plop that Lich King. If your opponent wants to trade into it to kill it, guess what? You're getting a second Lich King for only three mana. And that's just completely bonkers. That's awesome. And you can really build your deck or just build your plays in a way to support what splitting image is all about. And not all secrets allow that, right? A lot of them, they can just drop a firefly and they kind of beat your secret successfully. With Splitting Image, they got to attack what you play. Now, of course, there are decks that can summon stuff for you. There's like Leroy's and everything, but those are extremely edge cases and most of the time won't really impact how important or impactful uh, Splitting Image can be. Now, you know, it's not just a card in a vacuum. You do have to play things in a deck and you have to ask yourself what kind of deck might want to run this. It is true that pretty much every mage that's ever going to run a secret or play things like Arcane Keysmith or Kirin Tormage is not just going to have big minions. Control decks need small things like those Acolyte of Pains or Raven Familiars. So there are opportunities for this thing to kind of get stuck out there in hand or be played at the wrong time. It's not particularly good off Arcane Keysmith because you've got a 2-2 on board as soon as you play your splitting image. It might be hard to get another minion out there there to to uh, sort of um, absorb the splitting image hits of your opponent's minions so it's not without fail it's not obviously going to fit into any certain kind of deck it's not necessarily a great supporting piece for more of a tempo secret Kirin Tor uh, mage style of deck either so uh, it's a tad awkward but ultimately because the secret itself I think is so good and it just does something fantastic that means that someday along the way this card's probably going to see play somewhere right even if you just toss it into a control deck that looks for a little bit more proactivity or has some big threats maybe that's enough right and that means to me we've got a solid card here that will someday see some level of play so up next let's talk about the spirit of the rhino of course the spirit for warrior one mana zero three stealth for one turn your rush minions are immune the turn they're summoned so essentially this gives your rush minions the ability to stick around a little longer than they otherwise might. And it's kind of like a heal or almost like giving them divine shield so they can take those trades and retain their full health total or maybe stay alive when they otherwise wouldn't. And of course, that's really good. Extra minions are nice. Extra health on minions is good. So in all cases, this is going to help you build a more intimidating board state, a better swingy sort of turn than a rush minion might otherwise provide. So think about Darius Crowley, for instance. You normally trade it in. Maybe it becomes like a 6-3 
uh, after attacking into something, now it would be a full 6-6, six, six, so it wouldn't die to a flame imp trade or random 3-3 three, three killing it. It'd be much, much harder to deal with. You think about things like a Kali. If you play this with a Kali, it's six round as a 5-5 five, five instead of like a 5-1 or a dead a Kali, which means it might live to attack again to activate that overkill multiple times. If you play this with a Kali on the same turn, you draw that 5-5 five, five, uh, buffed rush minion next turn. That's really great if Spirit of the Rhino lives into a second turn because that thing's going to have a ton of attack and a ton of health that is now preserved after it takes a trade into a larger threat. Uh, ultimately, you just get more minions and more stats and tempo warriors that have play a lot of rush minions like to do that sort of thing. So clearly this fits really nicely. Now, I also will note that this does work with Dr. Boom rush mechs. If the mech has rush from Dr. Boom, Spirit of the Rhino will make it immune. I don't ultimately think that's going to be a great play for like odd warrior decks necessarily because, you know, this is not really the most control oriented card. Control decks like that don't often care about their minion stats or health quite as much because they're not looking to apply pressure. They have lots more removal to stay alive. This wouldn't really contribute to the game plan much, but maybe Dr. Mech makes the cut in a mid range uh, tempo rush warrior. And this is just another supporting piece for those mechs to stick around and do cool things. If so, Spirit of the Rhino has another home, or another card to support it at least. And all that means that I do think this card has a lot of potential. It's a solid um, resource. It, it's cool for what the deck wants to do. The challenge I see is that it's really just that one deck maybe that makes this thing work. So if that deck fails, you won't see this at all. So it'll look like a bad card, even though it's a good card. And another good sign is that we've just seen a lot of rush minions being added ever since Witchwood. They're not going away, which implies we'll get more in the future as well. And the more rush minions there are, the more support for that deck starts to exist. And Spirit of the Rhino sees more and more play because it just fits so well with all that rush stuff. So a card that will probably one day be a part of an important meta deck. Up next, let's talk about Mass Hysteria, a new five mana spell for Priest. It reads, force each minion to attack another random minion and this is kind of a cool crazy idea here so you know if your opponent has like two eight eights and that's the only thing on board you're gonna force those eight eights to attack each other and obviously they'll kill one another uh unfortunately on the other side of things if they have a firefly and an eight eight uh this doesn't really do much even if they have you know like a few three threes and an eight eight this really might not deal with that eight eight uh, so in other words, this is good against boards that are all kind of the same size minions, but as soon as you start getting minions of differing attack values or differing health values at least, one thing's probably likely to live. Like there could be certainly scenarios where a couple three threes attack a big thing and that big thing dies, but there's some consistency issues as soon as you start getting those mixed boards. Beyond that, you also have to keep in mind that this doesn't work especially well with your own minions. Like, you could still use it to get your own minions to take an extra trade in. Like, you could attack face and then cast this. Your minions would attack um, either each other or your opponent's stuff. So it would still help you sort out a board that you didn't necessarily like. But there's downsides for consistency. There's downsides for having your own stuff on board. So I do think this is cool. It's super fun. It will occasionally line up really well, just like Super Collider does but I do think it's worse than things like Super Collider or Brawl. And even though, you know, with Super Collider, yes, you have to attack and you take a little damage from doing so. Super Collider has a degree of control, and even though it's only two minions at a time and Mass Hysteria can be way more, that degree of control and influence over it, I think is way more valuable because this is just a little bit too random, a little bit too chaotic, and sometimes it's just going to whiff completely. And it's going to whiff completely when you play it sometimes. Other times there's going to be board states where you know it's gonna whiff completely. It's just not universal enough for me. It's not reliable enough. So I do wonder if this is gonna be a good fit for, for Priest. I don't know that they're gonna be able to run this over just like a Holy Nova, for instance, that may not have quite as much impact when, it, when Mass Hysteria high rolls, but has way more impact when Mass Hysteria low rolls. It's gonna be a tough decision putting this in a deck over something else. Maybe it's like a one of, it's a playable card, it's solid, it does uh, some really cool things against certain kinds of metas and decks but I don't think this becomes the go-to removal option for Priest in, in my mind. I think it falls just a little short of that mark. So then finally here we have the Blood Sail Howler, a new rogue minion, a two mana, one, one pirate with Rush, and it has battle cry gain plus one, plus one for each other pirate you control. So if you get this guy out in the early game, you have a couple pirates on board, maybe he's a three, three, a three, three with Rush, 
for two mana is honestly a really good card that's impactful because you can take a trade into your opponent's small stuff, protect the other pirates you have on board, and help cement an early board advantage that you probably leverage into lots of pressure and lots of damage, and you just kill your opponent. So I do like that. That's nice. And if you you know if you get this up to four four five five, oh my god, it's totally insane for two mana. The downside, of course, is if you don't get it to anything, you don't have any other pirates on board. This card's really bad. A two mana one one with rush. Just doesn't do enough. That's not going to go very far. Even a two mana two two with rush is merely okay. It's really not a good play. So this is a bit dependent on doing other things successfully. Uh, you could also take a look at this card in comparison, or at least in use with Captain Hook Tusk, the new legendary troll champion for Rogue, the pirate that summons stuff from your deck. And it has a bit of a counter synergy because Captain Hook Tusk could summon your Blood Sail Howler, and that would be a terrible minion to get off of. Uh, your Captain Hook Tusk, because this is a battle cry that it gains its stats, not just an aura. So it would be a really weak minion. Alternatively, if you had it in hand, it might not be bad with Captain Hook Tusk, because you could get a few pirates on board and then play your Blood Sail Howler, although that's a 10 mana turn. And then a card like this probably just doesn't go far enough in a more mid rangey style uh, pirate rogue deck. So I do think this card, although, you know, it has that promise where occasionally it would work nicely, most of the time it's it's likely going to feel awkward both in a deck building scenario but also on an onboard scenario where it's like everything has to line up for it to feel good. So I want to like this card a lot, but at the end of the day, I don't really think it's going to be played much at all. And there you go. That wraps it up for my detailed reviews. Now let's jump into the quick reviews. Zul'jin is a four-star card. Mojo Master Zihi is a four-star card. The Beast Within is a two-star card. Splitting Image is a four-star card. Spirit of the Rhino is a four-star card. Mass Hysteria is a three-star card. Blood Sail Howler is a two-star card. And there you go, folks. That's part 11 of my Rastakhan's Rumble card review. Probably the second to last part. I think tomorrow might be the final card review for Rastakhan's. Pretty cool stuff here. A couple legendaries I like a lot. Some solid cards overall. Um, really good set. Uh, Rastakhan's is going to be impactful, I think, guys. Going to make some big moves in the meta. That said, if you have thoughts, questions, comments, of course, those go in the comments below. But until then, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, game on.